Okay, so here we have this Surface Pro. Uh, this is the newest model when Microsoft dropped the uh, numbering and stuff. Um, it, this one's got the uh, i7 quad-core processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and I've got a 512 SSD inside of it. Um, one USB 3 port. We are tying into that with this uh, inexpensive gigabit Ethernet adapter by Insignia. This works pretty well. And uh, then we're just going out with the Cat5e cable. Now, uh, I was using this one the other day. Uh, this is just a standard UTP cable you can buy at Best Buy or whatever. Uh, 25 feet, and it works fine, except for when you're moving back and forth tethered with it, it kind of gets bunched up. So uh, back at work right now, I have a 25-foot uh, rubberized jacket one. Uh, it's snagless and... That one works a little bit better, so when you're moving back and forth, it doesn't get all twisted up and stuff. Okay, so let's talk about battery life. So tethered, for an hour and a half show, I was only down to maybe 50%, maybe slightly above. I didn't actually check the actual percentage, but you could probably get three or more hours of mixing tethered with the Surface Pro. And the three hours of battery life, too, was running the LV1 mixer um, in the high-performance mode, so, and that's how you're supposed to run it as well. So anyway, let's go ahead and pull up the session and uh, dive deep into my thoughts about mixing on the surface. All right, let's go ahead and launch the Emotion LV1 mixer. Yes, I would. You'll notice that you get this error box uh, when you launch it. Emotion LV1 requires a different Windows power plan. Um, so by default, when you buy a Surface Pro, or at least the latest models, um, you don't have the option to enable high performance mode. So you have to go into the registry and do a slight tweak to make it pop up. I'll go ahead and link the site that gave me good instruction on how to do that. But once you have enabled high performance mode, for whatever reason, uh, this still pops up. All right, so now we're in the LV1 mixer. Now we don't have anything connected, um, but our session from last time is still loaded. So you can see I had, uh, this is the computer, uh, or this is the Surface right here. Uh, this is the MacBook I had, and then I had a Digico SD11, uh, which is I was getting all my I.O. from, and piping stuff back. And then I'll, I also had an MGB connected uh, to connect to the other MacBook uh, for smart and recording and such. So in no particular order, uh, I'm just going to kind of go over my uh, impressions and, and how it felt to mix on uh, the, the surface. So at the top, uh, these buttons, the mixer channel buttons show and everything, uh, it felt really intuitive. Uh, a lot of times what I would find myself doing is going and selecting like the master and then going into the channel view and uh, basically grabbing whatever I needed uh, and making adjustments. So that's kind of nice. But yeah, these mixer buttons up here, uh, show everything worked really great to get around um so select channel whatever um on the left here uh i had a couple user buttons set up uh for tempo uh spill though i didn't really use that at all uh flip a a b if i was if i needed to get my recording back uh from tracks or whatever uh and then uh, the all important save session uh, I did find these to be a little small on the surface, so if you are using them, I would recommend just using um, every other one uh, just to avoid hitting, because uh, there's obviously some choices you could make that would be drastic if you uh, just fat-fingered fat them. Uh, the mute groups, uh, I didn't use at all uh, because they're kind of almost unusable with the way the touch is set up on the surface. Um, I just grabbed, uh, so I had this one mute all things, um, but I would just go and mute the master. I found, found that just a little bit easy. So we're kind of, we'll get into that a little bit later, but you can see on the surface, sometimes it's hard to touch things. Working on the faders wasn't too bad. Uh, most of the time, it was just one at a time, whatever I needed to tweak. Um, there's a couple instances where I wanted to grab both vocals or something uh, and adjust, and that was pretty easy. Uh, so I didn't have too many problems with that, like that. Uh, pans are pretty easy to adjust, though I uh, pretty much left all the panning the way it was from the start. Plugins are a little bit tricky to adjust. Uh, they're pretty small on the surface, 
So you have to be very precise. Um, and a lot of times the surface will want to grab and move the plugin. So you have to be very precise if you want to uh, make an adjustment and then go in and, and tweak. So uh, of course you could always just hit the channel and then go up here, that's the, that's the link. Uh, go up here and then you'll be into it. So it just depends on what you wanna do. Um, so when you're in the channel view, uh, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, the surface wants to pick up the plugin and move it around the rack, uh, which is fine if that's what you wanna do. Um, but you have to be very precise and quick uh, if you wanna go in and grab something. Uh, working with the plugins though, on the surface was phenomenal. Um, Waves has done a really excellent job of optimizing a lot of their new plugins for touch. And um, even the ones that aren't great with touch, uh, you can usually select the parameter you want and then go down here and grab, which is this one, for whatever reason, this one was a little tricky to grab. Um, I don't know why it's like that on this, but. Yeah, you just go and grab and you're good to go. So we'll go to this Sephira and you can just tweak two at a time, whatever you want. Um, it's really amazing to work with. Uh, let's go over here to one of the vocal channels and see, like, you know, this one wasn't done with touch uh, when it came out, but it's really easy to go in there and uh, change what you need to with your finger. Uh, this is one of the huge things I love about working with this mixer is the ability to just go in with your finger and uh, make all these adjustments, you know, and a lot of times like multiple at once, you know, it doesn't work as great with this one, but you see what I'm talking about? You know, just go in there and multi-touch the heck out of it and grab what you want. These mode buttons I didn't use at all. Uh, these are a little tricky to grab, uh, but you know, most of the time I'm just, I like to see all the plugins uh, kind of, and it helps me kind of visually separate things too. Um, so I can see, look right away and, oh, the ones with all these plugins, these are the two vocals and I can just go and grab these pretty easily. But you know, all the monitoring was being done by the 11, so. I didn't really have to mess with that too much. Um, what else? Okay, so these pages. These are super intuitive, very easy to get around. Um, if I was using a control surface, uh, if there was one designed this way, I'd like it to be laid out exactly like this with a row of eight buttons or nine or whatever, uh, just to bank around because it was super easy to get where I needed to go. Uh, with these these page buttons. And I, I just basically stayed uh, custom the whole entire time. Now I did have it uh, pink noise set up over here, so I would go and go out of the custom layer for that when I was tuning the show, or tuning uh, the PA uh, at the beginning. But custom layer pretty much the whole entire time. Um, it's pretty easy to get out of full screen too. I did this a lot when I was going back and forth. I wanted to make sure I was good on battery life, which I was fine the whole entire time but this was pretty easy just to go in and out. So overall thoughts mixing with the LV-1 uh, on the Surface Pro. Um, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, in a situation where you need to be a little bit mobile, uh, you know, front of house isn't really in the ideal uh, location or you wanna kinda walk around a little bit and still have all of your plugin processing and stuff uh, available to you. Uh, the LV-1 on a Surface Pro is excellent. Um, though the biggest con is it's not really optimized for mixing on such a small de device. So you do kind of have to bear with it a little bit. Um, and it is kind of a, a one at a time thing. Um, I think my biggest gripe, um, w which is why I've been wanting a, a dedicated control surface for so long, is it's such an eyes down device. And I don't think any engineer in the industry would debate that. Um, it really involves a lot of your attention going in and tweaking. And if stuff is going on, on stage, uh, unfortunately, you have to pay so much attention to what's going on here that uh, it just doesn't feel like you're involved as much on what's going on. Um, and 
I love the plugin uh, tweaking and stuff, but I really like a, a nice control surface that I could focus on, like having my hands writing the vocals on the control surface, or uh, you know using the user keys like tap tempo, uh, mute groups, uh, paging around for things, things that you can do without looking at the surface uh, and pay attention to what's going on on stage. Then you can go in, quickly tw tweak your plugin. There you go, and you're back looking at the stage again. So that's my biggest con, and I I, th I think touch screen mixing is is great, um, and has its place. Um, but you know this has so much potential. Uh, we just need a, a dedicated control surface to kind of push to the next level. But like I said, um, mixing on the Surface Pro is great. It's very stable. You get great battery life, um, and it's a, a great tool. Something I just wanted to try, uh, and uh, I wanted to share my experiences. Thanks for checking out the video, uh, and if it was helpful and you liked it, uh, please subscribe, uh, like the video, turn on notifications, whatnot. You guys know the deal. But anyway, I hope this, uh, hope this helped you guys, and uh, Hope to keep on putting out content for you. So thanks for watching.